Hey everybody, Nick here, and I got a review for you today of a little gem by the Benchmade Knife Company, and that's this little dude. That's the uh, Benchmade 485 Valet. So this is a special edition uh, that's done in cooperation with Shinola, which is a Detroit-based uh, watch and lifestyle fashion company, whatever the hell you want to call it. And, uh, pardon me. It uh, retails for about 200 The normal valet just has a gray G10. But everything I'm going to say about this guy, by and large, applies to the regular one. Um, first off, two things. I want to thank my uh, buddy Christoph Ward for recommending that I check this little guy out. I didn't actually know it existed until he found it. And then he fell in love and has been hounding me to get one ever since. So now I did. Now you go right, okay? Sorry, he's a writer. He needs to write. Um, anyways, uh... The other thing I want to point out is the size on this guy. I want to do a size comparison in a little more detail, because this is not a big knife. Here's your Spydeco Delica, which is much, much bigger than this. Here is your Spydeco Dragonfly, which is not too much smaller. Here is your Spydeco Chaparral. And uh, here is your uh, Chris Reeve Mandy. And that's about the closest size comparison you got to this. So this is a very small little gentleman's folder kind of knife, not a big knife. But anyways, um, in typical Nick style, let's talk a little bit about the good, the bad, and the ugly of this particular little knife, the Benchmade Valet. So the first beautiful part about this knife is the design. Um, it was done by a Benchmade in-house designer. I actually emailed to try and get a name, but they wouldn't give one. So whoever it is that Benchmade designed this, give yourself a freaking pat on the back, because this was an absolute well-done design. You got a nice continuous curve across here. You got a swedge here, which is offset by this inlay here which is just nice, the blade design, and it harkens back to a lot of your classics in Benchmade, your 940, your 470, the Osborne designs. Really, 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 really nice. Well done design. So I love it. And the size, oh, actually one detail about the design. This is kind of cool. So on this side, the presentation side, you just have your pivot pin here, or your pivot screw, and your access lock. Then on the top here, here's your stop pin. And on the back side, the non-presentation side, you see the screw for the stop pin. It goes into the metal of your liner here, but it doesn't come out the other side on your presentation side, just to keep it a little bit prettier. It's a little tiny detail, but that's something that made me think, holy crap, somebody was really thinking about this. And I applaud that. So that's just a little thing, but it's a big thing in my eyes. That's conscientious, and I like that design a lot. The size is great. Um, like I said, it's about the size of your Manandi, and it fits that same niche. It's a gentleman's folder. Even though it's a very pointy knife, no one's going to be scared because it's a little tiny freaking thing, which is a beautiful thing. The steel is great. This is M390, Bowler M390, which is basically the same thing as CTS-204P and uh, your 20CV, CPM 20CV. Um, and that's a great family of steels. Those three, I like myself some S35, but if I, you know... This is in some ways even better because it's got slightly better edge retention and it's just not a pain in the neck to sharpen like M4. It just, that's a beautiful steel. And it's way above and beyond what I kind of expected out of them. I figured this would be like S30 or something like that. But they really up their game here and that adds to the value of this knife in a way that a lot of their knives lately haven't had the value going. So that's nice. It's an axis lock, which is always good. But the bar length on the axis lock is pretty big. So the bars actually stick out. So you can grab these very straightforwardly and deploy the knife using the axis lock pretty reliably. Although you can use the thumb stud too, which is nice. The geometry on the blade is great. It's a great slicer, no problems at all. And it's thin enough that it, it's even better for an EDC kind of knife. This is an absolutely spectacular office EDC kind of knife. Um, and, you know, on the whole, it's just a very, very well-designed knife. I'm really impressed with that. And I like this a lot more than the Emissary, which in many ways, this was what I was trying to buy when I bought the Emissary. An Osborne design, although this is just inspired by, a uh, knife with an axis lock that, uh, that, you know, pivots pretty freely. And, you know, it's just a nice thing. So, really, there's a lot of good here, and a lot of that's in this design. So, that's the good. Um, you got great design, great steel, great lock, great blade geometry. I like the color of the scales, by the way. Um, it, it's the diamond wood, by the way. This isn't actual wood, although it is. It's plies of wood that are put together with resin. But uh, pretty nice overall. So um, that's the good. Let's go to the bad. A couple of bad things here. Um, the clip is a little out of place. It's big and it's bulky and it's beefy. 
and it works, no problem. And I do like that it's deep carry, but it's just bigger than the knife itself deserves. This is a small knife, gentlemanly knife, and it's got this big old honking clip on there. I wish they'd done something a little bit smaller, a little more subtle, a little more integral, uh, rather than having this beast on there. But, you know, that's a little thing. A bigger issue with it, though, is that the clip screws. I'm going to see if I can't show you this. The clip screws stick way into the path of the clip here, which means that they're going to tear up the inside of your pocket pretty good, and it's also going to make it a little harder to go that final mile and get it to a deep carry status. With the screws like that, I almost wish they'd gone with a regular non-deep carry clip and uh, made that, you know, just a little bit nicer in, in the hand. They didn't have this big beefy clip. But a lot of people actually take the clip off of these and just treat it as kind of a gentleman's carry sort of clipless knife. Um, that's totally fine. Whatever. Um, the blade is a little too light, is another issue with this. And that's a, a real nitpick thing. This is hedonic adaptation here. But one of the best things that the axis lock has going for it is that free swing in motion. So this is a mini grip with AWT scales that a beautiful Rita, uh, Rita viewer has loaned me. And it's got that beautiful axis lock just wiggles back and forth kind of thing going on. And a part of that is a consequence of having a heavy blade. This guy has a very lightweight blade, and that means that for the kinds of centripetal force things that you're doing to flip it around, you end up kind of running out of, running out of juice. And so I don't know, like right there, I don't know that they could have made this blade a lot heavier. Maybe they make the swedge a little less aggressive, whatever. But it just feels a little too light, and then you end up with a trade-off, because if you want it to swing freely, you're going to need to have side-to-side -side blade play, and I don't like that. And that's a big problem that Benchmade has just kind of in general, is that blade play during the axis locks. So, anyways, I wish the blade was a little heavier, but that may just be a fact of life with this design, and I'm happy to live with that. That's not ugly. Um, the knife is almost a little small in the hand in some positions, and I got small hands. So if you're a big hand kind of guy, realize that this knife is going to be probably a little too small for you to manipulate happily. Uh, if you're happy with your Manandi, then you're going to like this, but this is a very fiddly, small little knife, so keep that in mind. Um, the price is a little bit high. Uh, very, well, I mean, it's 200 bucks for the Shinola version with the wood, and it's 170 bucks for the regular version with G10. That's not completely out of line, I'll say that much. I don't feel like I got shafted paying retail for this in the same way that I would have if I'd paid 270 for a 941. The steel is incredible, and, you know, overall, it's just a very beautifully designed knife, and it's nice for what it's doing. So, I don't really feel like the price is so out of line, but I would sure love to see 20 bucks knocked off this. I'd feel much better about this at 180 bucks than I do at 200 and of course, right now, this is the Shinola edition, and Shinola's overpriced, Benchmade's overpriced. There's a nice little synergy there. So what am I complaining about? I kind of walked into that one. So those are the bad things. Um, that the clip just doesn't seem to match the knife itself. Um, it's a little small in the hand, even for me. The price is a bit up there, and the blade is just a little too light to get that axis lock smoothness uh, that you really kind of want without having blade play in there. And blade play is not a, a wonderful thing, particularly. So let's finally go into the ugly of this little guy. So three ugly things here. First off, this G10 backspacer in orange is just absolutely ugly. Uh, just terrible. And that's okay. Um, I can dye that if I need to, if I end up keeping this guy. But I, I really wish they'd done something better. That just makes the whole thing look cheap when the rest of the knife is really pretty good and classy looking. So I wish they'd even just done metal or something there. Would have been much, much nicer overall effect. Um, that's a cut corner. The next ugly thing, actually the next two ugly things are pretty much universal to Benchmade nowadays. Um, first was quality control. Went to the Shinola store to actually pick this up. And, uh, oh boy. The first one they brought out had a bad grind. Uh, it had some vertical blade play, and uh, which is no good. I mean, bad news bears, vertical blade play, no good. Side to side, wasn't centered, just kind of a wreck. Never should have left the factory floor, but it did. And so I asked him, oh, could you grab another one? This one's got some troubles. And this one came out fine. Uh, the centering is almost perfect. Can't really complain there. A little bit of side to side blade play. Um, I could probably have a little less if I tighten the pivot more, but I'd have even more trouble using the axis lock. But that's just bad. The fact that even, you know, that's just Benchmade's life these days. But the fact that walking into a store, I had to send one back before I even walked out the place makes me really reluctant to recommend that people order these overseas or someplace where they can't send it back to Benchmade to get it right. 
So that's that's just dangerous. And so if you can go down to a brick and mortar store and pick one of these up, and you can make sure that the one that you're getting isn't gonna suck, then that's a beautiful thing. Otherwise, you're kind of rolling the dice buying a Benchmade right now. Uh, watch my uh, Benchmade brand review thing. I, I talk a little bit more about that issue, um, but whatever. Then the other thing is just fit and finish issues in general. This is pretty well done for a Benchmade. No real big issues. But for instance, your diamond wood scale here, there's some pretty heavy burring on this, and it doesn't exactly match the steel liners, which is not really great for a $200 knife. I want them to at least sand that down a little bit. And I can do it myself, okay, but I shouldn't have to. At 200 bucks, they should be doing better than this. And just overall, there are some minor fit and finish faults that are uh, just evidence of the fact that it's a bench made. And it sucks, and they need to stop being so damn lazy and up their standards a little bit. But hey, whatever. Uh, when the access lock goes away, they're going to have to up their standards. Uh, they're going to perish. So those are the ugly things. Uh, the orange G10 is ugly. The uh, fit and finish is ugly. And the quality control is ugly. So what's the final verdict? The final verdict on this guy is that it is a gem. I do like it a lot. It's a nice little knife, and that's really what it's best at. It's a very good little knife. It's a gentleman's folder, and it's kind of a Mnandi equivalent that's a whole lot cheaper than a Mnandi. The quality is not quite the same, but it's damn close. Um, a lot of people are going to be thinking, oh, well, what's, what's the difference between this and the 940? I already sold my 940, but this is a lot smaller, which is really nice. It's a lot less tactical, even the G10 version. And I appreciate that. I mean, the 940 is not bad, but this blends in in an office. No problem at all. It's a great little office EDC knife. And that's really what this is best viewed as, is a nice little everyday carry knife that'll do any cutting task you need very happily. And because it's M390, it'll do it for years. Um, and this one actually did come plenty sharp, which is pretty nice and I'm happy about that. So versus the 940, if you pick up the 940 and you think, God, oh, that's big, then pick up your valet. No problem. Um, and similarly, if you want something that's a lot like the 470 Emissary, but doesn't have the assist, that's what you're looking at here. But if you need something that's for more like outdoors utility cutting, this is not a big utility cutting sort of knife. This is not what you're going to be using on the job site. This is what you're going to be using in the office. So that's kind of the key difference there. Your 940 is a much more burly knife. It's a much bigger knife. Your valet is a much more small knife and a much more, I don't know, refined knife. Yeah, I guess that works. So um, for me, I like this a hell of a lot more than I like the 940 because the 940 is a little bit big and it's not my style. And this is much more my style. The big question is, well, Nick, is it going to stick around in your collection? And you know, I don't know that yet. It might well. I do like it a lot in the fact that it's the access lock and that's good. And you know, it's a pretty good access lock, all told. There's still a little blade play and I really don't know whether blade play is a, a necessary part of the access lock by design or whether it's just the case that Benchmade is incapable with their manufacturing standards of making an access lock that doesn't have blade play. Not sure which. We're going to find out in July when other people start making access locks. But nonetheless, if it weren't for that issue, I'd be completely on board with this. And even as it is, it's a really nice little gentleman's carry knife. And it's good for a day when you want to be in something a little less pricey than your Menandi. Um, really, for me, it's going to be fighting your Spyderco Chaparral here, which is the other kind of perfect office EDC sort of knife. Um, so I don't know who's going to win here, but I'll let you know in a couple of months when I find out. But on the whole, like I said, the Valet is a gem. I can straightforwardly say that. Uh, it's got a just incredible design. It's well thought out. The steel is really good. It's got a well-implemented access lock with no major design faults at all. It's in a great size. It's got some issues with the blade play and the clip is bolted on and shouldn't have been. They should have done something a little better for that. And then finally, it's got the same quality control issues and the same fit and finish issues any Benchmade has. But if you go pick out the right one at a store, you're gonna be fine and you're gonna freaking love it. So this is a gem. I think you should try it. If you're on the fence, do it. 200 bucks isn't so insane. And if you're happy with the G10 model, do that too. Save some money. But yeah, that's the Benchmade 485 Valet. I hope this has been helpful, and uh, have yourselves a wonderful rest of your day.